I've made several videos about toroidal propellers now. It's time to actually use one. I don't have a drone, but I do have an inexpensive USB-powered desk fan. In addition to being inexpensive, it has the advantage of being easy to disassemble. In order to put a toroidal blade on it, I need to model the hub for attachment. Really, I need to model a CAD cutting tool to make blades that fit, but a model of the hub as is is a good start. I'll start with a few measurements. The diameter of the hub, mounting ring, and alignment posts is easy. It isn't too hard to measure the central screw mount either. The depth feature of calipers comes in handy for all of this. As for the alignment pins, measurement is most accurate when there's a flat surface to force the correct alignment. The pins are rounded, but if I measure them as three points in a triangle, I can get an accurate measurement of the height and let the sketcher work the rest out for me later. Even with calipers, measuring the curved surface of the hub is a bit problematic and involves eyeballing a few things. To get the curves at least close, I really need to be able to trace a scaled image in the sketcher. Fortunately, there's the image workbench for that. I don't have a proper jig to do this professionally, so I'll make do with a flat surface, a cell phone camera, and printer paper for the background. I want to make the photo as head-on as I can get it. In order to correct for scale, I have put a pen with a nice millimeter scale on top. Before the picture can be used in FreeCAD, it needs a little post-processing. I'll be using GIMP for that, but if you prefer something else, that's fine too. If GIMP asks you about converting the color space when you load the image, say Convert. Looking at my picture, I can see everything was tilted a bit. That's not too surprising since I did it with a handheld camera. I'll just drag a guideline down and position it along the bottom of the mounting ring at the center. Now select the rotation tool and rotate the image until the entire bottom of the ring lines up on the guideline. Once set, click Rotate and give it a moment to process. Next, to make the image a little smaller and easier for FreeCAD to digest, I'll go to Colors, Posterize, and force it to 255 colors. Now, File, Export As. I'll export the image as a PNG file. Now it's time to create the base of the hub. I'll use the photograph to guide me in the sketcher to create a profile to revolve. Go to the image workbench and click create image plane. Select the image previously processed through GIMP. I want to put it on the XZ plane. Select front view so we can see it head on. Because the millimeter scale is included in the photo with the two and the six millimeter marks clear, I have a good reference to scale the image. Click on Scale Image Plane. Fill in 40 millimeters. Click the first point on the 2 millimeter line in the image. Click the second point in about the same relative position on the 6 millimeter line. Click OK. The apparent size didn't change much because in this case the camera happens to have included pretty good metadata and the image was quite close up to begin with, but it is now scaled with more precision. So it's well scaled, but it's still not aligned in the coordinate system. Back to the part workbench and create a new sketch. I will add in lines for the bottom, left side of the hub, and the y-axis and set their constraints based on caliper measurements. Close the sketch for now. In the view pane, I'll set the lines in the sketch to show a little thicker than usual so they'll show up against the image. 
Now right click the image and select transform. The objective is to move it until the vertical part of the left side of the hub lines up with the line in the sketch. The base of the mounting ring should line up with the vertical line on the y-axis as that's where we measured from with the calipers. Keep in mind when tracing a photo, unlike a scan, there will always be some parallax. The camera's point of view comes from a pinhole-sized aperture, more or less, so it will only be truly normal to a tiny spot on the object. The upshot is that things will not line up perfectly everywhere. The photo is just the guideline. It is possible to use photogrammetry and get a more accurate mesh of the hub in three dimensions, but that's overkill for this application. OK the positioning and go back into the sketch. First I see the flat part at the top, so I'll line everything up and bring a horizontal line out to match the photo as best as I can. There's an obvious arc at the corner, so I'll drop that in. Finally connect it up with a diagonal line from the arc to the flat. I'll make a few small adjustments to the arc and lock its endpoint into place. Now fix the radius. It looks as good as we're going to get, so close the sketch and revolve it 360 degrees around the z-axis. That looks pretty good. I can hide the image away now. The rest of the design is amenable to hard measurements. Fortunately, given the ultimate objective, these are the more important parts. Even if the objective was to make a replacement hub, the exact curvature would be a lot less important than keeping the part that mates with the blades in spec. So I'll select the top of the hub and create a new sketch. Accept flat face, the suggested mapping mode. I'll create a circle centered on the origin with a diameter of 18.4 millimeters, as measured with the calipers. Close the sketch, make sure it's selected, and create a sub-object shape binder. Select the binder and set an offset of minus 1.28 millimeters, the measured thickness of the mounting ring. Set fill offset to true. With the binder still selected, extrude to 2.5 millimeters, forming the mounting ring. Rename it mounting ring to keep it organized. Now another sketch on top of the hub. Again, flat faces the mapping mode. I'll make concentric circles to be the screw post. The inner circle is the screw hole. Set the outer circle to 6 mm in diameter. The inner circle is 1.45 mm. Close the sketch and extrude it to 2.5 mm to match the ring. Now yet another sketch on top of the hub. Same mapping. Add an equilateral triangle centered on the origin. One point up. Use the auto constraints to set the vertex on the y-axis. Select one vertex on the base and the vertex at the top and set a vertical constraint of 12.75 minus 2.86 millimeters. The 12.75 is what I measured with the calipers but the constraint needs to be center to center, so I subtract the measured diameter of the pins. Might as well let FreeCAD be the calculator. Now select the three sides of the triangle and toggle construction geometry. In this case, the whole triangle is to be construction geometry. Now add a circle at the top vertex of the triangle and set its diameter to 2.86 millimeters. Add circles at the other two vertices and set them equal to the top one. Close the sketch. I measured the alignment pins at 2.5 millimeters above the ring which is also 2.5 millimeters, so extrude the sketch to 5 millimeters.
Now, before things get confusing, I'll rename Extrude 1 to Screw Posts and Extrude 2 to Alignment Pins. The alignment pins are supported by wider columns up to 2.5 millimeters. Create another new sketch on top of the hub. Bring the pins in as external geometry. Click View Section so we can see the external circles properly. Now add circles centered on the center of the pins. It was a difficult spot to measure on the original, but careful examination shows that the supports just touched the outer wall of the mounting ring. So bring in the outer wall of the ring as an external geometry as well, and make the circles for the supports tangent to it. Close the sketch and extrude to 2.5 millimeters. As a final step, the alignment pins have a significant chamfer on them to guide assembly. Select the top rim of each pin and chamfer 0.5 millimeters. That doesn't look like enough, so I'll increase it to 0.75 millimeters. One quirk is that the parameter is not available in the data pane. So you have to double click on the chamfer in the model pane and revise it in the dialog. After all of that, the model looks very much like the original fans hub. Of course, if the objective was a replacement part, I would need to hollow it out somewhat and add a post to fit over the motor shaft. But that's not needed here and I didn't really want to pull the fan that far apart for this project. Be sure to hit subscribe and turn on notifications for a follow-up video where I will turn this hub model into a tool that can be used with buoy and cut to make propellers that fit the fan. Coming soon. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.